how do you think this these ideas got into the military leadership to the point where they're firing a guy for writing a book about Marxists being Marxists and it being in the military when <clears throat> for the last four years, theoretically, we had Trump. And like the years before that, the woke stuff hadn't it hadn't fully. Oh, fully it was it was exploded. it was it was coming. They they made an effort to uh, uh, hire woke generals. Remember, you know, generals are socialists. Generals operate. You know, it's fun to be a dictator if that gets you off. Um, they are they're in a situation where you're told where to live, what to wear, where to go, how to be. Uh, they think nothing of banning alcohol because you might make bad choices. Um, you know, that's why they're all for gun control. Well, of course it's gun control. I, you shouldn't have a gun. I don't think you need one. Mm -hmm. we, we need to lock them up because, you know, in the Army, guns are locked up. Why would you have one? They, it, us National Guard guys, I spent my last 23 years guard, uh, except for when I was on active duty, you, you, you could see the contrast because most of us had, like, started our own businesses. These guys had no concept. Mm. of the outside world everything was set for them and that's what that you do need that in the military okay five thousand years tells you you can't really have an entrepreneurial army that just doesn't quite work uh the whole idea of uh you know, mercenary armies crisscrossing europe fighting for whoever's got the most gold doesn't seem to work these days though sometimes i think we ought to give it a shot um yeah, ask me about privateers to take out uh, uh, Al Qaeda. It sounds like fun, but uh, no, they're they're, well, they're socialist. That's actually pretty four G of us to do something like that instead of trying to drop all of our ordinance on one city and kill everybody just to get the one guy. Hiring, hiring locals to do hits. That's actually the way that we should be doing it, right? I think they. Um, uh, I. I, I, I think there are a lot of options out there that we haven't fully explored. And, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the term mercenary is thrown around so much lately. But there, there's, you know, there, there's some value to it. Although, you know, we have the Roman history example where you professionalize a military instead of making a citizen military. And pretty soon you have Caesar. Now, Caesar is not so bad if you're Caesar or one of Caesar's pals. But if you're not, ooh. That's not going to work out so good. <laughs> yeah. um, of course, liberals don't look at history. But he, now right. I got to put a lot of blame on Trump because he had four years to unscrew this. He, did. he was impressed by generals. And generals are impressive in that on the battlefield, most of them are legit brave. And he had a guy like Kelly, uh, General Kelly, he, his son was killed in action. I mean, they're not sissies in the, in, in, in the normal liberal sense. They have a lot of personal bravery, but they get Kristen Gillibrand yelling at them in a Senate conference about how they, uh, you know, their toxic masculinity, and suddenly these guys are quaking in their combat boots. I don't get it. Um, you know, you start pushing. So you got you got uh, mm. Trump doesn't know, and, and remember, Trump got screwed by every general he hired. That's right. At some level. Yep. Okay. Even even Flynn caused him problems involuntarily, but he did cause him problems. Yep. Um, and Trump was continually impressed by it because they're generals, right? And um, that was a mistake. You've got to treat these guys with like a whip and a chair, right? Like like uh, Siegfried and Roy and their tigers. And remember, the tiger ripped. I don't know if it's Siegfried or Roy, but ripped one of their one throats of, out. One of them. Um, so, you know, I read, so, I read this in your, I read this in your most recent column at town hall and you guys should check it out. Kurt's got, he, what is it? Three times a week up at town hall. Yep. Three times Monday, a week. At Wednesday, town hall. Thursday. Check it out. I read one of your most recent ones and you were talking about this phenomenon about Trump being impressed by the generals. It is Ugh. interesting and ironic that we, the people who elected a bomb to drop in DC to destroy the captured institutions that we acknowledge were captured. He himself, the bomb did not understand that the institutions had been captured. There is That's some true. deep irony in that. Yeah, he didn't, he wasn't fully woke. He was kind of outside the institutions, but also a part of them. He was, you know, he was a fixture. He still respected Maggie Haberman in the New York Times. He'd call it the failing New York Times, but if he wanted to be in a paper, he wanted it to be the New York Times because yeah. he, he, he still had that, that vibe that, um, that the institutions mattered. That's why um, we need guys who uh, understand, who are woke, and who actively want to destroy and defeat 
enemy institutions because yeah. they're all aligned against us. All of them. All of them. They're all aligned, all of them. They've all been captured, and the only approach is to either destroy them or completely ignore them and create your own new networks and your own new systems. On an individual level, or much both. easier to build your own networks and to build and to function that way. With the government, I'm not exactly, I, I don't know what the answer is there besides, I mean, the name Sulla keeps, Sulla keeps coming Sulla, to mind. Nice. But, but, but please, nobody research that reference. I'm not advocating for anything but there's a clearing of house you you don't you're not making a prescription prescription (laughs) no Um, definitely not but clearing house remember Sulla ended ended up melting uh uh with worms and stuff as he died but anyway although he did give up power which i think was interesting he did not Um, not until after he just axed what like three thousand people or something like that no better friend no worse enemy um (laughs) look the look and i like you, I spend a lot of time reading Roman history because I, I find it instructive and interesting. I'm reading uh, about Hannibal right now, the ghosts of Cannae and uh, that battle and its aftermath. And this stuff is fascinating. And like, we, like we've been talking about, the, the lessons are still, the lessons of history are there. And I think it's, you know, it's ironic that I can go on my phone and within five seconds have a book uh, by one of the greatest scholars ever at my fingertips. And, you know, I, I often listen to them when I'm driving or exercising or whatever. Um, time management. Right. And uh, <laughs> nobody, uh, and very few people do. I mean, we have the most historically illiterate yeah. uh, society I think America's ever had. I mean, you go back 100 years, they'd be talking about Pericles and the Peloponnesian War and what did Alexander the Great do? And you start talking about that stuff to people, and they're like, well, I, I was informed that uh, history began in 1619, then skipped forward to Obama got inaugurated, and then took a break between 16 and 20. Well, this is a phenomenon that is is a big deal, which is the disconnection from the ancients, a disconnection from history, yes. a, a belief that everything old is bad and everything new is good. This is a big problem. I mean... Our students today barely understand what's on the map, much less understand the parallels between America and Rome and why it's valuable to study Roman yes. history and see what's happening there. There's not uh, any chance in the near future of that being restored. And I also just had a thought, too, which is that as the sum total of available human knowledge continues to grow exponentially, the, yes. the likelihood that you're able to acquire a commanding grasp of it diminishes every single day i wonder if we're actually leading to a point where like the the amount of information is just going to make it so that we don't absorb any information at all well i i I don't think it's going to work out that way and you know i i was fascinated because at one point in 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 human history and maybe not too long ago maybe two three thousand years ago one person could know everything that humans knew that was important he he could he he could do agriculture. He could hunt. He could do you know maybe read and write. He could do uh, you know basic medical stuff. He ha- you, one person could possess all human knowledge. That's that of course is impossible now. The skill is having a general outline of knowledge and then being able to find the answers, which is the secret of law. Right. You know, do you, do you think I I don't have one of my code books here, but it's like this thick. Right. You you think I memorized the entire California, and that's just California code. Um, I mean, every every time before I go in trial, I go and read the evidence codes, about 20, 30 pages, uh, just to remind myself I've been doing this 27 years. Um, so It's about building it's, a system of being able to acquire yes. the information to identify, go out and get it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And you, I think it's kind of a, a medical doctor model where you have an MD and he's got a basic medical knowledge and then you specialize in some. For instance, I know a lot about Romans and I know a lot about the military. I don't know so much about, uh, I don't know, sports, right? But if I wanted to, I could go find, I, I could go find the information, you know. How many no hitters have there been in the history of Major League Baseball? I barely know that that's concept, but in about 10 minutes, I know how I could find out. 